These are the instructions for workplace 2A clock fractions. Each pair needs two clock fractions record sheets, a spinner overlay, colored pencils in several colors, and regular pencils. So to get started, player one is going to spin both spinners and then they're going to record their spins uh, over here in the box that looks like this. Uh, do them in two different colors. And as you write them down, you're also going to shade them in on the clock like this. So you can see that one third I have in blue that matches my pencil over here. Three twelfths matches the orange part. When I get through, I can count the twelfths and see that all together I have seven twelfths. And then I will complete my equation when I get to that point. Both of you are going to check the work, make sure that the fractions are shaded in correctly and that the sum or the answer is correct. And then player two follows the same instructions for their turn. Here are some other things you need to know. You will not move on to the next clock until you have filled up a clock. However, the exception to that is that if a clock is nearly filled and you spend something that is too big to fit on that clock, you can split your fraction and put part of it on the first clock and part of it on the next clock. And that's a really good strategy that you're going to want to use. When a clock is completely filled, players are going to write an equation that shows the fraction underneath the clock. I'm gonna show you that in just a minute. And the first player to completely fill all three clocks wins the game. You have to fill it exactly. So if you need a 12 to win the game, you have to spend one 12th. All right, let's look at player one's next move. So let's say they spun a two thirds on a five sixth. Once again, they have completed those in different colors. They're going to come over here to this uncompleted clock uh, to see if they can complete it with these fractions. So we did a little bit of equivalent fraction work here to see that we're gonna be filling in eight twelfths. We don't have eight twelfths there. So what we're gonna to have to do is put five twelfths in the first clock to complete it and the other three twelfths go here. Then we're going to go to our five sixths, our other spin, and we do our equivalent fraction work here. We know that we need to fill in 10 twelfths. When we do that, we can only put nine of those twelfths here. So the 10th twelfth has to go down here on the next clock. Now, when we were doing all of that, we did fill in some of our clocks. So we have to write an equation for a completed clock. When I do that, I just look to see what is filling the clock in the different colors. So I, hear, uh, I have a third and three twelfths and five twelfths. So that's what I'm going to put in my equation over here. I know that that makes 12 twelfths because it fills up the whole clock. And 12 twelfths is also equal to one. I could do that for the next clock in the same way. I could see that three of my twelfths are in the green. So I put that here, nine twelfths in the red. I put that here. Altogether, that makes 12 twelfths, which is one. Or I could do it this way. Just by looking at it, I can see that this is one fourth of the clock and the red is three fourths of the clock. So I could have also written my equation like this. This time I would get four fourths which is also equal to one whole clock. That's how you play clock fractions. Have fun.